Well, what a good group here tonight. Uh, God bless that. And any first-time visitors? Any first-time visitors? First time you? Oh, not you, Tony. Come on. First time visitors. Ah, oh, these guys. Keith looks like first-time visitor, doesn't he? <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Well, at this time, let's go around and shake hands, someone, and welcome them here. God bless you guys. Seven ninety four, let all things now live in. Amen. Seven ninety four. I need all the help I can get on this one, okay guys? This is sorta of new to me. Here we go. Let all be seated. Gentlemen, you can come forward. Father God, we're honored to come before you again tonight, Lord, to um, ask that you would bless this tithe, Lord, that you would convict people's hearts, Lord, to give a little extra to help out, Lord. Anytime that we get anything, Lord, we want you to have 10%, not because you need it, but because it helps our brothers and sisters, and it's a wonderful demonstration of our faith to you. Help us, Lord God, in this, and bless the tithe, and bless the night, and thank you for all of your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.
Good evening. Now that everybody's awake, good evening. Powerful uh, brother, man. I'm telling you, he's powerful. It. We're bring it down in here. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to see everybody tonight. It's a nice crowd for Wednesday. Does anybody need a prayer request sheet? I need a couple prayer request sheets if we have them. Got Brother Roarball up here, too. Brother Chris. Anybody else need a prayer request sheet? Oh, thank you so much, sir. Jason, if I could have two more, please. I'll take one too, sir. I'm going to pray, and then we'll gather in groups. If we have a buddy, we can pray with a buddy or... You know, however you prefer to pray, we'll just pray for a few minutes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful evening tonight. We thank you for the people that took the time to come out here, Lord. I ask that you would bless them tonight. Lord, I ask that you would just be with our missionaries, uh, the people that are doing the work and spreading your word, Lord. They are truly special people out here that, that take your word and just spread it, Lord. I ask that you would be with them tonight. Be with all of us, Lord. Just let us receive a blessing tonight. Uh, let us be thankful to be in the house of the Lord and uh, just truly be blessed by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to get up and move around, you go right ahead. If you want to be with the partner, you know, maybe you're sitting next to somebody you don't particularly like and you just, no, I'm just, just playing. I got you. Sing number. Let's all stand. 
seven uh, eighty-six. Count, count your blessings. blessings. Yep. Hey, you know what? Four young men, about 11 to 14 years old, isn't that right, Christopher? Received Christ yesterday. Amen. That was really cool. That was really cool. Amen. That's wonderful. And they're serious. They may show up. All right. Be prepared. Here we go in a second. Are you ever burdened with load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to. See what God has done. Okay, next. Anybody? Alfred? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it cooled Lord things Lord off a little Lord bit. Lord yeah. Amen. All right, one more. Who is it? Hold up, hold up. Miss Paula, go ahead. What was it? Uh, I had a really good report on my. Um on my CT scan and my heart, when I went to the heart doctor, he said my C EKG was really good. Amen. So. Praise the Lord. Hey, Christopher. Christopher. Praise the Lord. Wow. Amen. 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 Praise right. God. Let's go to the third. Here we go. When you look at others and their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Yes. Anybody? Yes. I'm glad I can come out tonight to see my brother. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, uh, I was hoping to go to the next day, and my co-worker, I got mixed up. She went away at about 11. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right, you got one in Spanish. I'll translate, okay? Okay. Saturday, el, el, el sábado pasado, the Saturday, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> last, <laughs> last Saturday, <laughs> last Saturday. Cinco personas hicieron su confesión de fe. Five people that made professions, that made professions of faith in the Hispanic community. Amen. So he's just praying they'll come, you know. Amen. People are coming, it's starting to happen, praise the Lord. They're still trying to convert Christopher, so. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I have one big one. 
I have 13 more days before I get to Hey! <laughs> I feel for you, man. All right, on the last. Here we go. So amid the consequence of great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. After many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has. Seated. And isn't it a blessing with all the different opportunities that we have for different things? Think about with the uh, VBS coming up, and we have another Blitz coming up this Saturday at 10 o'clock, so come and join us for that. We have uh, the deep cleaning and decorating going on this Saturday as well. So anybody who'd like to get involved with decorating for VBS, that would be great. Okay, don't forget we have school supply drive uh, for Seaford Elementary Schools. Uh, be seeing Cassie Hafer for that. All right. There you go. Um, we had a great time with prayer time last night. Okay, so anytime that you come out for prayer time, you'll definitely get a blessing. How, how many can attest to that? Go ahead. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so anytime that you can come, please do come out, okay? Um, and you can sign up for that if you'd like. And we have our Super Saturday Evangelism coming up on September the 7th. And we're going to have tacos on that day. Who likes tacos? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so come out for that as Saturday. well. That's right. Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, this Sunday coming up, we have... Potluck breakfast, so anybody who'd like to get involved with that. I'll stop in a minute. All right. Of course, we have the Reviving the Stones, if we can put that up, okay? Reviving the Stones, mini revival coming up. Who's excited about oh, that? Oh, it's going to be good. Praise the Lord. And if you know anybody who needs to get baptized, make sure that you get them involved with that, okay? We got several at the end of the month, but we have one this Sunday. Uh, because she has family coming in, so it's going to be great. Amen. Uh, weekly cleaning, anybody that would like to be involved, if you can pick a day here or there where you can help out for a half hour, an hour, just any way that you can help out. And then our exciting time on August the 31st, the Trap Pond outing. Hey, Who wants to go to the yeah, Trap Pond outing, good. right? That'll be nice. Excited about that. All right. And so that's uh, everything today. Pastor don't, Barry? Hey, don't forget about that prayer rotation, too, on Tuesday nights. There were 22 last night that came to pray. That's nice, isn't it? Amen. You know why? Because if we're not praying, we're frying. You know what I'm saying? We're in trouble if we're not praying. Do you realize how many times Satan has this plan and it's thwarted by prayer? I believe the Lord does mighty things because we pray. Am I wrong about that? In his providence, that's how it is. So keep on that 30-minute daily prayer time as well. Turn in your Bible, if you will, to Esther chapter 5. Now, Esther is an unusual book. Esther, as has been said, shouldn't have been inspired. Now, how many of you believe the KJV is imperfect? I do not. And I'm here to tell you something, that Esther is inspired of God. Every word is inspired of God. And as you look at Esther chapter 5, you're going to find some interesting stuff in there. Now, I'm going to tell you what. You couldn't preach inspired word unless the word was inspired. Am I wrong about that? So the exposure that we're going to get tonight in Esther is going to be of very, very deep importance. Revival, August 25th to the 28th, is going to be an exciting time. We're actually going to be focusing on the Scripture on the stones, on the revivalist stones, all right? And then next week, bring a kid. How many of you know a kid? Let me see. Bring a kid. Listen, go across the street. You know what I would say? Don't even ask the parents. Just grab the kid. Just 
You with me, Patty? Grab him. <laughs> Whether across the street, down the road, grab them all. Just throw them in here. We'll have a good old time. Esther chapter 5. All right. And we're actually going to be starting back some in Esther chapter 4. But the title is this. Are you tired of being a scared? Are you tired of being fearful? How many of us sometimes will wake up in the middle of the night nervous about something? You get a little bit uptight. You get a little nervous. Uh, I know that money can do that to you. Personal circumstances can do that to you. But you know what? You can put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the waters. You can do that. Let's pray before we keep going. Father, your Holy Spirit has to take over tonight. You know very well that you alone can preach to your people. You alone can do what needs to be done tonight. I have no confidence in myself tonight. I, in fact, I feel very insufficient, very humbled to even be standing up here. Help me, Father God, to be careful with every word that I say. And may everything that your word says be given true place. May this only be exposition. May it be nothing but taking off any coverings on the Scripture that might keep us from seeing the truth, that might keep us from being enlightened by the truth. And may you be glorified fully, dear Lord, in everything. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, before I give you my opening illustration, we're actually starting like in the middle of this book. So can somebody fill me in as to how it starts? Anybody know? The book of Esther, how does it start? Huh? Okay, so there's this difficulties going on. The Jews are with Artaxerxes under his control. The queen, who? Vashti does what? Rebels basically against the king. And what ends up happening? She gets tossed out of being queen. That's a good way to put it. She's out of there. You know what I'm saying? So right off the bat, they're looking for what? Who are they looking for? A queen. And they go and they get all the young virgins of the land. And Mordecai, who is cousin to who? He decides also that Esther needs to be part of this Cinderella story. You know what I'm saying? So Esther comes in. And Esther is favored, first, I believe in the Scriptures, is favored by those who are in charge of the harem, okay? Those who are in charge of the ladies' area is actually favored. And then after that, she's favored by who? Himself. Artaxerxes. Ahasuerus, the same guy. That's two names for you, but same guy. And he decides that he wants her as the queen and puts the royal crown on her head now there's another character who is also an advisor to artaxerxes what is his name haman Haman. and tell me about haman somebody just give me a phrase or two bad guy okay hateful okay what else that's a big one right there that's a big one So you got Artaxerxes, you got Esther, you got Mordecai, you got Haman. These are some major characters. So one night, one night, one night, two guys decide, we're going to take down the king. And what happens in this scenario? You guys know? Mordecai foils the plan. All right, Mordecai foils the plan, and it's written... In the books, the chronicles of the king. But nothing much is done about it. He's not praised. He's not given his due place. It just write it down, right? And so that's got to be in your memory bank as well. Because after what we're about to look at in chapter 5, you see that that story is revisited. It comes back, all right? So what ends up happening at this point is Haman's walking around, and he's been given... Right. He's been given great authority. He's like second in the kingdom. And he's what happens? His his 
his whole body just starts to get really large and he gets too big for his britches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> his whole body gets too large, he gets too big for his britches. And what do I mean by he gets too big for his britches? He's got an ego. So he walks out of the king's house and he's walking down the street and everybody's doing what? Bowing down, giving homage to Haman. Homage to Haman. And then Mordecai sees him and he just stands there. He doesn't even act like he's there. He's like, and you know what else? Haman realizes Mordecai is not the only one. He starts looking around and none of the Jews will bow to him. None of the Jews are making homage to him. And this is ticking him off. All right? He's getting angry inside. So he formulates this plan. And you know what? Haman was a rich guy. He had a lot of money. So he decided, I'm going to give a big gift to the king if the king will destroy these stinking Jews. Let me ask you a question. It's only once or twice that the Jews have been sold into slavery, right? <laughs> it's only once and twice in history that the Jews have been, people have wanted to eradicate them. Well, this is just one of those times. And in this case, as he's wanting to eradicate the Jews, as he's wanting to tell Mordecai, you big, stinking, rotten thing, you, you should bow down to me, he goes into the king, and what does he do? Listen to this now, and tell me if it doesn't happen today. Let me ask you, the United, United States of America is the only country in the world where the politicians are not spoiled, right? <laughs> Nobody in our country is corrupt, correct? No politicians? No? Okay. They're all, <laughs> They're all perfect. Now, now we've all lied to each other and made ourselves feel good. All right, here's a real truth. Every culture in every time period, listen, power corrupts. And power corrupts big time. I mean, huge. Uh, you know, what we say is just almost infinitely it corrupts. All right, so Haman's corrupt. And he comes in to a king who I believe Ahasuerus wasn't perfect. And he says, you know what? If you'll get rid of these pests, I'll pay you to do it. Because you know all they're doing is just ignoring your laws anyway. They're just ignoring your laws anyway. He's like, they're ignoring my law. Yeah, they're ignoring their, they got their own set of laws. They don't listen to you. They're ignoring your laws. He says, all right. So he signs the edict to destroy the Jewish people. And we catch that story right in chapter 4. And Mordecai has taken his clothes off. He's ripped them. And he has put sackcloth in himself, which is against the law. And he's standing in the king's court, which is against the law. And verse 4 of chapter 4 says, So Esther's maids and her chamberlain came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved. And she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him. But he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatak one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. In other words, I want the scoop. What's going on here, Mordecai? What's happening? Let me know what's wrong. Verse 7, And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him. This is Hatak. And Hatak comes back, and he tells Esther, he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy the Jews, to show it unto Esther and declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and make request before him for her people. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Now we're in verse 10. Everybody with me? Esther chapter 4 and verse 10. Again, Esther spake unto Hatak and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king, into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his, but put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not called, I have not been called in 
unto the king these 30 days. All right, so let's get some perspective before we continue, because I don't want you to be confused here. That's a big verse. That's a big chunk, all right? Esther realizes. Listen, I love you, Mordecai. You are my cousin. But I now am under duress of my life. Because if I go into this court and I have not been called and he does not extend that golden scepter to me, I'm done. I'm finished. And you know what she's got to be thinking? Boy, it didn't take an awful lot for Vashti to be put off to the side. All they did was call her. We just want you to show us your beauty, Vashti. She says, no. All right, goodbye. We'll get you another, we'll get another queen. And she's got to be thinking, and you know what? I don't know if Vashti lived through that. Can I just say this? I mean, if you could die just by not having a golden scepter extended to you by coming. I don't know if Vashti lived through all that. I'm not saying she didn't. I'm just saying I don't know. So this has all got to be running through Esther's head. How many of us have been scared to death that something was going to happen where our, our, our entire economy was going to fall apart? Or somebody in your family had accused you of something and you thought you were going to have to go to court. Or you thought maybe that that accusation was going to be so real in the ears of the judge that you were going to end up in jail. How many of us, you don't need to raise your hand, but just think, how many of us thought maybe we were going to end up in jail sometime? You know, when I was in high school, I had this young man who did not like me, all right? There were a lot of young men that didn't like me. In fact, a lot of people don't like me today. <laughs> but <laughs> this one guy, all right, this one guy comes in and he pushes me down the hallway. Pushes me down the hallway. And he pushed me again. And I kept running into the wall. I kept going. I thought, man, I wish mommy and daddy were here. I know daddy would beat this guy up. You know. But I was scared for my life. And as a high school kid, you think, come on. Hey, can I tell you, there are high school kids that are scared for their life right now. You know, high schools, some of them have become war zones. I have some good buddies, some good friends that have told me I worry for my children because they're in public high school. And there's stuff going on. Man, back in the 80s, there was stuff going on. So there's got to be some stuff, stuff, stuff going on now. You know what I'm saying? But back then, that night, I went home and I got on my face before the Lord and I begged the God of heaven to do something about that guy. Because he had told me that afternoon, tomorrow, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to beat you up. All right? Now, nowadays, it would be, I'm going to knife you. I'm going to do something. Now, back then, it was just, I'm going to punch you in the nose. Well, that was bad enough for me. I like my nose, you know? I was telling some friends right before service, I might have surgery on my nose. Because that's one of my real bad issues, you know? But in every, every way that I looked at this, I thought, I can't get out of this. The only one that's going to save me is the Lord. I got on my face and I started pleading with the Lord about that guy. And the next day I went in, man, I did like a, a rocky session that night. I was all like, da 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 Because you can't tell your parents, you know, you can't do that. But you can't kind of, you know, do a lot of, Lifting. One, one night of lifting changes everything, right? <laughs> so I went into school the next day, and do you know what happened? That guy's grandmother had died that night. Now, I'm not saying my prayers are powerful, but I serve a powerful God. And that night, that woman died. And this guy was in school, but he just said, I ain't got the heart to fight you. And we became friends. It was the weirdest thing. You say, now, Pastor, why did you tell that story? It's because to a ninth grader or whatever I was at that time, that was a big deal. And some of you are going through a big deal right now. And you're having trouble sleeping at night. You're having trouble because of t terrors in the evening. 
And I would like for us to be looking at Proverbs chapter 3, Esther chapter 5. I'd like for us to look some at Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10 tonight. I'd like for us to take the Word of God and dissect some things that I think will be a great help to all of us. Esther finds out about her, her people's imminent destruction, and she realizes, hook or crook, whether the king kills me or whether, Mordecai, or whether uh, Haman kills me, I'm going to be dead. I'm going to be dead. Look with me at verse 12 now. This is Esther chapter 4 and verse 12. They told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this thing, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. In other words, if America stops loving the Jewish nation, my Bible teaches me that the Jews are still going to be saved somehow. My Bible still tells me that if we're not a part of it, somebody else will be. And can I tell you something? I don't want that. As an American, I want the Jews to be protected by us. I want the Jews to know they can count on their allies. I want to be that guy. And here Esther started to understand that. She herself being a Jew. And in verse 15, Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. And here was her answer. Here you go. In verse 16, go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast. You know, I struggle with hard-boiled eggs. Whenever Barb can't cook, for some reason, I can't cook either. So whenever she's out of commission, we're done at the secret's home. Because because even hard-boiled eggs are hard for me to hard-boil. It is. Look at what the Word of God says here in verse 14 at the end. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for what? Such a time as this. I cannot boil a five-minute hard-boiled egg. Well, it's because I'm either on my phone or thinking about somebody that's going through some stress or thinking about some counseling issue or praying or whatever, and I come back 15 minutes later and my five-minute egg isn't five minutes anymore. I struggle with this, but she got it right. And this is what I want you to know. God's timing is right always. So the question then, as you go into verse 16, is this. If God's timing is always right, why did they have to fast? Why? Well, God's going to protect the Jews anyway. My friends, can I tell you something about First Baptist Church? There should never be a time that we start to say, it's no need to pray, God's going to do everything for us anyway. If you don't work, is God going to do everything for you anyway? If we don't evangelize, is God going to win all the souls anyway? You see, this is what I want you to get. The providence of God is clear that there will be a remnant that are saved. And I am so glad for that. But if you don't do it, somebody else will. And in Esther's case, if she wasn't going to be the defender of Israel, somebody else would be. If the United States won't be the defender of the Jews, Jewish nation, somebody else will be. This is how the providence of God works. And I am here to tell you that the hardworking people end up getting a part of that. What is fasting anyway? Can you tell me why we fast? What does it demonstrate when you fast? Yes, very good. Somebody else. It does bring you closer to God. I appreciate the denial factor. I appreciate the the uh, circumference factor. Somebody else. Food is not my God. It's not going to control me. I don't have to have the fuel. My fuel is God. You see what I'm saying? So you say, well, isn't that kind of the opposite of what you just said? Well, yeah, if you stop eating and never eat again, you'll be dead. Right? 
But for a momentary lapse, we do two things. Are you ready for this? It is about dependence and it is about guidance. How many in this room need the guidance of God? How many of you are concerned that you might not have the full guidance of God? See, we make decisions every day. I just say, you know what? We're just going to do this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you fast about that? Did you pray about that? Did you slobber and snot on the floor with God about that? Because I'm telling you that unless we seek God's face, it is easy to get a plan wrong. It's about what? Dependence and guidance. I need the guidance of God. I need to depend on the Lord. Here in this text, you see this awesome thought. Look at this. To gather all the Jews that are present in Shushan, fast with them. He, she says, get, listen Mordecai, get them all together and fast with them and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. She says, <laughs> John, I want to ask you a question. Do you think that Esther took seriously going into that throne room and having that scepter extended? I mean, she was serious, man. She's like, the whole nation of Israel <laughs> needs to fast for three days and nights with no food or drink. That's some serious stuff right there. She was taking this seriously, you all. I also and my maids will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. Let me just remind you, she says. (laughs) This is not according to the law. And look at this. I love this. You ready? Here we go. And if I perish, so I've done all I can do. You feeling me on this? How many of you are scared to death about something right now? Get before God. Pray. Fast. Let your desires be known. Look for guidance look for dependence, and then leave it in his hands. And just say the phrase, if we perish, we perish. There's some risky stuff going on in my life right now. There really is. I'm risking a lot by doing certain things that I believe the Lord is going to bless. But I got to tell you, If I'm not fasting, I'm not praying, I'm not looking for God, I'm not allowing him to be my guide in some things, I'm in trouble. You know, in Daniel chapter 3 and verses 17 and 18, you see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this is what they say. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. He will do it, verse 18. But if not, (laughs) there you go. How about this, you guys? How is that for faith, you know? (laughs) He's going to deliver us, but if he doesn't, oh well. (laughs) And that's what Esther's doing here. Look, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So he's, he's basically saying this. I know what's right. I don't know what God's going to do about it, but I know what's right, and I'm going to do what's right. How many of you are on board with me on this? Listen to me. You're scared about something. You're thinking, maybe I'll overstep my bounds. Maybe I'll get into some high interest rate credit card to solve this problem. Don't overstep your bounds. Depend on God. Look for his guidance in that problem. Because I'm here to tell you, if he doesn't solve the problem and you've done everything you possibly can to see it solved, you are exonerated before the Lord. You see this? But if not, be it known unto the king, I'm still not going to do wrong. Here's the problem, isn't it? We get scared, we get nervous, what do we do? (laughs) I'm just going to hide. That's what I'll do. Oh, my friends. Don't you hide. You stand up and do right. Stand up and do right. They used to sing that song, right? Do right till the stars fall. Do right till the last call. Do right. I don't remember what the rest of the words are. 
But it's a downright good song, isn't it? <laughs> you do right no matter what. <laughs> Daniel chapter 3 and 17 and 18 are encouraging, aren't they? Look at Genesis 43 and verse 14. Genesis 43 and verse 14. The Word of God tells us, And God Almighty give you mercy before the men, that he may send away other brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children, who is speaking here? Jacob. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. What is he saying? I don't think I can be in God's stead. How many of you think you're God? How many of us think we're God? You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid that every, every day I start my day thinking I'm God. You know what? I've got my plan and it's all going to work out just great. Everything is just perfect here. Every 15 minutes are planned. Everything's perfect, just excellent. And in the first three seconds of the day, I'm like, oh, man. God, you know what I'm going to have to do? Two things depend on you, and be guided by you. And how do you do that? Fasting. Fasting. Say, Pastor, do I have to stop drinking? Well, if you're drinking alcohol, yes, you need to stop drinking. But uh, do I have to not have water? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is, on any number of levels, you can decide to give up something to say to your Lord, I need your guidance. You know why they fasted many times and didn't eat and didn't drink? Because back then there was a lot of preparation involved in making food. And so they cut out all that preparation. They just sat there before the Lord and they prayed for those hours. And that was their fast, man. It was just, God, please help me, oh God, please help me. As we go on to the story, understanding Esther's circumstances, I think is vital for us to come to this reality, you and I have got to have gutsy faith. We've got to have gutsy faith. Moxie. I remember the first time I saw that drink. How many of you have ever heard of moxie? Have you? Very few. But up in New Hampshire, there was this drink in my barn. And I think it was a soda of some kind. And I, I, if I remember correctly, it tasted awful. It really did. I don't know what it had in it. I, I think it probably had like three times as much caffeine in it as a normal drink does. But it's called moxie. And that word moxie meant gutsy. Gutsy. The question for us, I suppose, is when you look at Esther, walking into that huge cathedral-like room where the throne room of Artaxerxes was, wouldn't you say that's a woman of moxie? Gutsy faith. You see, she had just prayed for three days. She had just had others pray for her. And she had decided, if I'm going to get extinguished here, oh well. <laughs> if I'm going to be dead, oh well. If I perish, oh well. And verse 17 says, So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded. And it came to pass on the third day, chapter 5, verse 1, that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. I... I'm so glad that because of the blood of Jesus Christ, I can walk into the holiest of holies and I can have the favor of God. You know, I really deserve that. What do you think of that phrase? Hey, what do you think of that phrase? I really deserve the favor of God. What do you guys think of that phrase? What is the favor of God undeserved? What is that called? Grace. And here is the grace of God. He says this, 
in this text that he had extended that scepter. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Are there times that you're in prayer in the morning and you get to a certain point? I believe this is how it is. I know people don't like the phrase praying through, and I don't either. I really don't. You know, I think you can get before the Lord and get the job done in three words. You know, I really do. I don't really go for that. But I do know this. The longer I spend with my wife, the more fun we have. I dislike the phrase quality time. You know what always necessary, Dennis? And you know it. Because you've been married long enough to have proved it. Quantity time is better than quality time, isn't it? Because, man, you could be sitting in front of the TV doing nothing. And as long as it's long time, holding hands, hugging each other, giving my wife a nice little back rub, woo, that's going to lead to some really special times. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm just saying, with God, it's no different. Don't get to where you get to thinking, well, God doesn't need a lot of time with me. No, he doesn't, but you do. Am I wrong about that? You do. I've talked with several of you about your Bible study time and how long it takes to go through your studies. And I think that guy is the real deal because he spends time with the Lord. And here you got to know that when he extended that scepter and she touched it, This is what he said. Look, Esther, because of the way you've been, looking at verse 3, the king said unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom. Do you know why the king did that? It was because Esther came in like this. I deserve to be here. I'm the queen, for goodness sake. No, it's because... Look at the text. How did she walk in there? Look at it. Beginning of chapter 5. Yeah. And how does she do it? It almost looks like to me, and you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm wrong a lot. But it looked like she came into the very corner of the room, and she stood there. And she walked in. You know, my friends, I'm going to tell you. I know the word of God tells me that I can walk in boldly into his presence. But when I start praying in the morning, I don't say, Lord God, I'm so glad I'm in your presence today. God bless me because I am to be blessed. No. I get tired. Now, I'm not on people. I'm not trying to say it's wrong. It depends on how you say it, I suppose. But when people go on like, I am blessed and highly favored. You know, I say you're seasoned and highly flavored. That's what you are, you know. (laughs) But when they do that, I'm blessed and highly favored. Okay, I suppose it depends on how you say it. But man, walk into the throne room of God with great care. You say, Pastor, what of this fear thing? I want you to go to Proverbs, if you will. And with this passage, I'm not saying we're done. But this passage is going to bring us to a conclusion, all right? This passage will bring us to a conclusion. Now, you know the rest of the story, that Esther was given the life of her people, that Esther's life was saved as well. But what do you need today? What do you need today from God? Can you, you know what I'd really like? I'd like for us all to say that phrase. What do I need from God? Just say it out loud, Here we go. What do I need from God? Say it again. What do I need from God? Say it one more time. What do I need from God? Now go to Proverbs 3, 21. Proverbs 3, 21. My son, let not them, speaking of the words of God. Listen to this. This is speaking of the words of God. Listen to this. This is speaking of the precepts of our Lord. This is speaking of every little tidbit of wisdom that God can give you. My son, Let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck 
Every minute you spend reading the Word of God, every minute you spend meditating in the Word of God, you become a richer individual. No money on earth can make you richer than the wisdom of our God. Am I wrong about that? What's the greatest riches on earth? The wisdom of God. So, should that 10 minutes a day reading turn into 20 minutes a day reading? That might ought to turn into 40 minutes a day reading. No, Pastor, I'm already praying too much. (laughs) Why don't we balance it out with some Bible reading too? When you're praying, what are you doing? When you're meditating, what are you doing? Hearing from God. Which do you suppose is more important? Verse 24, when thou liest down, what does that say, y'all? About 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock, I wake up and I think to myself, oh, something's going on, something's going on. I always think this. Either that person's doing something in the street or that person over there is having a heart attack or this person, and none of it's ever true. I mean, it's almost never true. But I'm getting these terrors at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, thinking about all my buddies, all my friends. You are my buddies and my friends. I don't have a lot of buddies and friends. But First Baptist Church is my buddies and my friends. And I think about you and I worry about you. So you don't call me all the time. Man, that's sometimes because I'm afraid I'm doing it too much. I know I'm texting way too much. You can leave, Ray. Anyway, (laughs) when thou layest down, thou shalt not be afraid. I get afraid for every one of you. I get afraid for your dogs. I get afraid for your cats. (laughs) I get concerned about things. And then I wake up in the morning and I start reading and meditating in the Word of God. And that takes me almost to the next day in peace. Maybe I need to read just a little bit more so I get that last hour and a half or so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like a pill that doesn't last. <laughs> you know, I take my, I take my levothyroxine at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I got to take it again at next 6 o'clock in the morning. Now look at this. Thy sleep shall be sweet. How many of you need that? Are you worried about something? Be honest. See, a lot of time we don't want to talk about it because we're like, yeah, well, well, worry worry is sin. Well, I think we got sin all over us if worry is sin. What does verse 25 say? Why don't you read those first few words with me? Be not afraid of sudden fear. You know what that is? It's when California fires are off to a bad start. It's when some things are going on and we're worried about the economy. It's when you wake up Monday morning, the stock market fell 1,100 points, right? Hey, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. What do we need today? I've spent some time recently around some people that really are struggling. I told you there was one last passage we'd look at. Look at Nehemiah 8 and verse 10. And we're done. How many of you live in a house? In a house. All right. How many of you live in a real apartment? Now, I'm not going to ask this because it may be true that somebody raised their hand, but how many of you live in a cardboard box? Some of the people that live in our area live in a cardboard box or in a tent. They don't have food. I met a guy a little while ago that had nothing, all right? I'm not going to talk about it specifically, but I met this guy... Had nothing, all right, zero. 
And his attitude was this verse right here. He said unto them, go your way and eat the fat and drink the sweet. This guy, a lot of his needs were taken care of. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. He would actually take some things that people might give him to eat and he would divide it among other people even though he had nothing. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Michael, man, there's some special times that you and I have just texting. It may take five texts to get us there. That's it. (laughs) But it's something special between Brother Michael and myself in this texting time. And the other day, I just said, Michael, think about this phrase. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And we're just both kind of like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. Dude, you know what? Be joyful. Be joyful. You say, wait a minute, but you don't know what I'm going through. I'm having this difficulty in a special way, and I'm going through a thing, and you don't know. And, man, I don't, but God does. And you know what? You can still let the joy of the Lord Be your strength. Let me emphasize two words. Of the. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm telling you that if it's your joy, it won't mean anything. But if it's the joy of the Lord, it will mean that you will be stronger than you ever thought you could be. Will you stand to your feet? Think with me tonight. You're worried. You're upset. You don't have anything. You're worried about the future. 